over there is one of those new Nissan Primeras. Nice colours, decent ride, and a choice of some three engines. Prices kick off at 14,600 quid and come to halt at just under 20. Right, that's out of the way. Let's get to the best bit. We'll fast forward past the exterior. Basically, the headlamps are a work of art, but the overall one box shape is the work of a five year old. Instead, let's talk about the interior, which is a work of genius. Nissan have turned dashboard design on its head, and you wonder why no one has done it before. Gone is the normal boxy approach to be replaced by a dash that swoops round from door to door. And as a result, the cabin feels vast. The steering wheel is pretty much where you'd expect to find it, but the speedo isn't. But it makes everything feel so much less cluttered and it takes about one second to get used to. Now we come to my favourite part, this central bank of buttons and switches, which Nissan have lifted out of the gloom by your knee and put on this much more sensible level. It looks pretty complicated, but after five minutes of bloody-mindedly not reading the instructions, I got it sussed. It is the most blissfully straightforward system. And if you go for the SE or above, you get this nice big colour screen to check everything on. Brilliant. There's another reason to buy an SE. Your very own rear view camera. Select reverse and a perfect image is brought up, night or day, of what you're about to crash into. It's superb. I want one in my home. It's just about the best gadget I've ever seen. And you know what? It's made me realise just how underrated reversing actually is. The gizmos don't stop there. I haven't even mentioned alloys, rain-sensing wipers, integrated hands-free for your mobile, and apparently five forward gears are standard too. Although they're not really as good. They're not connected to any camera, are they? Nissan used to focus on making the Primera a superb driver's car. And this one is not a chip off the old block. Thanks to soft suspension and steering, it doesn't like to be chucked around. But let's face it, the other one was a fantastic car to drive. And that got it precisely nowhere. What will get this car places, though, is its practicality. Despite having a healthily huge boot, there's still plenty of room in the rear for reclining in loose robes. Even the grab handles adapt. Surely a sign that Nissan have come of age. The Primera is starting to make a strong case for itself. Dad will like the price, Mum will like the space, and the kids will love the toys. OK, so the 1.8-litre engine is a bit rough around the edges, and the manual gearbox is the same notchy mess it's always been. But none of that matters. The looks don't even matter. I happen to like them, plenty won't. But who cares? They haven't got a rear-view camera. Nissan have focused on the things that really count in this neck of the woods, like design, practicality and attention to detail. It brightens up suburbia far more than the run-of-the-mill Passats and Vectras and is a far more interesting proposition than the Mondeo. You could say, in fact, that it's a, uh, oh dear, leapfrog to the top of the Retmobile pile. The Primera may be just another four-door saloon, but it's the first one in ages that makes mundane, everyday driving interesting. And it's got a rear view camera. <laughs> <laughs>